Welcome to the Advance Your Art podcast, where we talk about the journey from artist to entrepreneur and everything in between. You've worked hard to hone your craft. Now take it to the next level with tips, techniques, strategies, and routines used by successful artists to grow their businesses and careers. Now, let's get started and have some fun with your host, Yuri Cataldo. Hello, welcome to another episode of Advance Your Art with Yuri Cataldo. If you're interested in learning how to build a company, make money from your art, or transition to a new career, you've come to the right place. As always, if you like this episode, please remember to like, subscribe, and share with a friend. Today I'm chatting with Dr. Sandy Curtis, speaker, music therapist, social activist, and author of a book, Music for Women, Survivors of Violence, a Feminist Music Therapy Interactive Ebook. Sandy, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for inviting me. Of course. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm I'm very excited to have you on board and, and hear more about your work. For my audience members who are less familiar with, with your what you're doing and what you're working on, how do you describe yourself and what you do? Well, I am a music therapist, and you might might be right that that might be an unfamiliar term for some people. So I use music working with people uh, in a broader scope of trying to improve their quality of lives. Uh, right now, I'm working with women survivors of violence uh, because that's a very important challenge for many women uh, trying to recover from the harm of abuse. And music and music therapy seem, seem to be a particularly effective way to help them. So I'd like to go in a little bit deeper about um, your interest in this. So what initially got you interested into studying music and music therapy? Ah, well, I was uh, studying classical music in Montreal at McGill University. And I enjoyed it, but I just didn't find it captivating as I was wanting for a future career. And then I learned about music therapy. Music therapy gives me this wonderful opportunity to use music to improve their lives, much more so than if you're on a stage singing to or performing to an audience. Here I am uh, using music every day with people who uh, are facing considerable challenges uh, in their lives and music is an incredible way to help them with those challenges. And I think we all know that music is, uh, has this, uh, intuitively have a sense of its power. It moves us emotionally, physically, spiritually, psychologically. Uh, and it's that power of music that makes music therapy such uh, an incredible uh, resource for personal transformation. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. So I want to hear more about kind of your your journey after you got your degree. So when you, I guess, were first studying music therapy, did you know that you would be getting into, you know, particularly uh, working with, with women who have, have been abused? Or was that something that has come out of your, your research and the, the different areas that you focused on post school? Yeah, it certainly wasn't my initial plan. Uh, When I graduated, uh, I got a job as a music therapist working in palliative care uh, with people with life-threatening illnesses. And So coming to work with women survivors was actually more accidental than anything. Uh, I was teaching full time at the time in Georgia, uh, USA, and I had an opportunity for this music therapy position at a correctional facility in in a small town in Georgia. And at the time, even at that time, I was not thinking about working with uh, survivors of violence. But when I got into the facility, I found that the women I work with, about seven out of 10 in the small group of 10, had been survivors of violence. And a large number of them had ended up in prison because they'd taken a violent uh, means to get out of their abusive relationship. And so that what really began to let me see that music uh, therapy could be very effective for them, but also to know that uh, so many women in so many walks of lives are really uh, impacted by the violence 
violence. Uh, it's often a sort of a kept behind closed doors and, you know, an un, unspoken secret. Uh, and yet so many women are impacted. So once I got into there, I, I really got very excited about the possibility of reaching out and helping them on their journey to recovery. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's wonderful. And so as you're in your own journey, because it's, it's, it's in looking at kind of what you've been doing, you, you know, you, you've straddle the academic world and the private world uh, very well and kind of go back and forth. How, how has that relationship worked in your professional life so far? And is, is there one that you prefer more than the other? No, I, I really enjoy the both. Uh, one enriches the other. Mm -hmm. uh, in teaching music therapy, you're not allowed to teach unless you've got a certain amount of clinical experience. And then what I found the real joy of when I was teaching at full time at a university was that it allowed me the luxury of working with different groups and different populations. So if I were work, having to work full time in a music therapy practice, I would focus in on one group. But because I was working at university, I could take on different projects. And this allowed me a lot of variety. And so as you heard, I taught I talked about working in palliative care. I did work with women survivors of violence, and that's the most recent, but I also had the opportunity to work uh, with uh, adults with uh, disabilities. And so the variety of, of being and having your feet in two different worlds is great. And of course, music therapy is a field that allows great variety because we work with people from all ages and all walks of life. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So I'd, I'd like to hear more about your book. So um, was it in 2019, you released uh, a book. Um, what, what initially made you want to write the, the Music for Women, Survivors of Violence book? And what was that process like of, of creating this book? Uh, it, it, I felt it was such an important almost a mission for me. Uh, for so many years, uh, more than 25, I've been working with women survivors, but behind closed doors at sexual assault centers, at battered women's shelters. And behind closed doors was essential uh, and also to keep them safe uh, because many were being stalked by their abusers. Uh, but what I found was that these women were really able to recover in, in incredible ways through the healing power of music, but people outside of my therapy groups weren't aware of what was out there for them. So I, I decided I really needed to make a book that spread the word and I really wanted, so it was definitely not uh, a focus of an academic book. I really wanted it to be out there for, for just every everyday person who could read it. And I also wanted to include as much music as I possibly could, because I, I hate just talking about music and not having music there. Uh, so that was the impetus for the, for the book. Uh, and it's really, the audience I anticipated were really threefold. Uh, one was for women survivors of violence. Uh, the next audience was for women in general, because we may not be survivors of overt violence, but mm -hmm. we grow up in a culture uh, that objectifies women and is misogynistic and uh, devalues women. So all of us are impacted by it, whether or not we have an explicit experience of physical violence. And then the third group was for music therapists who might want to learn more uh, about mu how to use music therapy to help survivors. And that's that's important music therapists and other health professionals because uh, you may not work at a shelter for women, but one out of two women in their lives will experience male violence. And so wherever you may work, you may find yourself working with a survivor, even if they haven't told you that. Mm -hmm. If you find yourself wanting to be an ally to support women survivors, there's many ways of doing that. And, and whether whether you're in a field that works with survivors explicitly or not, being open, being open to the idea that it might be a possibility. And then when hearing women, certainly as allies, we need to listen to them, hear them, and take them seriously and believe them so that, you know, 
the, the, that's the, the primary reason many women do not speak up is because they fear they won't be believed. They fear they're, they'll be shamed and blamed for the violence. So we, if we can uh, keep an open mind uh, and so that when we hear them, we believe that what they're saying is very serious and it needs to be, uh, uh, needs, one has to have a, a, an open mind to uh, explore with them their experiences if they're ready or certainly just you know on the other spe spectrum if you're not a healthcare professional uh, you know if you're a guy in the locker room and you're hearing locker room talk which I hate that that expression uh, people need to speak up and stand up and speak up and say hey we don't do that we don't say that anymore in 2020. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much on that one. Um, another project I see that you've worked on is uh, Call, uh, something called Beyond Me Too. Could you tell me more about that project? Yeah, and that, that's also very near and dear to my heart. Uh, it's again part of my uh, role as not only a music therapist, but as a social activist, that uh, understanding that what I do behind closed doors with women survivors is important, but alone it's insufficient, that we need to actually change the world. We need to actually work to eliminate violence against women. So the Beyond Me Too project was uh, a way again to get word out to the public. So I created a film uh, and that was working with university music therapy students uh, using music, uh, writing music, performing music, and recording it to get out to the world their experiences of male violence against women. And then the project, the ultimate purpose was to make the, the film free of charge and available online open access to anybody who wants it. So it can be shown or watched for personal viewing, but it can be shown in classrooms for educational purposes or at, at uh, you know, professional organizations. Uh, so the purpose again was to show how the, the, the serious and pervasive the nature of violence against women is, uh, and to show how music can be an, empower, an important tool for not only empowering women, but for bringing about change. We look a lot at the music, you probably see it in pop music, there's a lot of stuff out there that is uh, negative towards women that objectify mm -hmm. them using the eye candy in various pop music videos. But as much as music can be used in that negative way, it can be used in a subversive way to challenge the status quo. Uh, and so the music that I used in that workshop, as well as uh, the, the film, and as well as my, my book as well, is music of women, strong women singer songwriters who are giving their take on uh, life, on experiences growing up in this world. Some of it's about their experiences of male violence, but some of it's what it means to be a man or a woman, what it means to be in love, what are our relationships, uh, what is empowerment, personal and political, uh, and, you know, maybe just a good old kick-ass feminist anthem there included in the bunch. Uh, so that was sort of the nature of my thinking and the project and then the ultimately ultimate goal of making it available open access to anywhere anywhere anyone anywhere in the world oh great thank you what are some of your favorite songs with mm. that Oh, I have so many that I love. And of course, there's more since I, I have about 200 in my book. Yeah. And I say, wow, 200 and like, oh, I've only got 200. And then since I released the book, there's been such great music that's come out since then. So my most recent one that I've been listening is to the Chicks, uh, March, March, mm -hmm. uh, which is, I think, a great one. But there's some classics. There's uh, Lady Gaga's Till, Till It Happens to You. Uh, there's... Um, some fabulous ones. This, it, it's just really incredible how much music is out there, mm -hmm. uh, and and for different styles. Because of course, each what works for me is maybe not the same music as for others. Uh, so I, I do listen to a lot of pop. When I was working with women survivors in Georgia, uh, that group R&B was their pop. Mm -hmm. 
voice. <laughs> so I, I learned a little bit more. Uh, so it's really, there's some fabulous music out there. Uh, and I'm trying to think there's been some great protest songs that have been used in, in, the, in the most recent marches as well. Uh, and some big names and some smaller names. Uh, Milk, who wrote her own song. Um, quiet, I Can't Keep Quiet, which is uh, not as big a, big a named song, but still a powerful song. It became the, really the anthem for the women's marches a few years ago. Yeah, wonderful. So I'm, I'm curious about your and how your relationship with, with the term 